We all know what it's like to skip tons of dialogue in a video game. Some of it feels really useless and even kind of boring, but it's not always the right thing to do. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 dialogues you shouldn't have skipped in video games. Starting out with number 10, a Daedra's best friend. Now, there's a ton of dialogue in Skyrim, so it can be tempting to skip through, to say the very least. But there are a few rare occasions where skipping everything is going to get you into trouble. Case in point, this quest called A Daedra's Best Friend. It's this one where you meet up with a talking dog called Barbus who wants you to get a uniquely powerful weapon called the Rufal Axe so he can reunite with his master. When you talk to him, the dog specifically warns you against making any deals with his master for good reason too. The dog's master is actually Clavicious Vile, the Daedric Prince of Trickery. Making a deal with that guy, it's not going to work in your favor. Like the Daedric Princes are basically the gods of the world in the Elder Scrolls and he's not really the most trustworthy one the trickery one yeah so you get the axe and you bring it back to the daedric shrine and clavicus gives you an offer kill the dog and you can keep the axe now a lot of the daedric quests end with you doing something nasty and you're rewarded for it so if you just skip through the dialogue you might think that's the best option but when the dog told you not to make any deals with clavicus he meant it because if you do take the prince up on his offer he'll give you the axe and it kind of sucks it's pretty weak and the swing feels slower than pretty much anything else so it's not really worth the effort if you choose not to kill the dog, instead you get the Mask of Clavicus File, which, while not being the absolute best piece of armor out there, counts towards any achievements you get for collecting Daedric artifacts, and it gives you 20% better prices at merchants, which is great, especially if you're just starting out. So while the loss isn't terrible if you pick the wrong option here, it's one of those things where you listen to the dialogue, what you should do is blatantly obvious, but if you don't, you probably think killing the dog is what you're supposed to do, even though it absolutely isn't. Number 9 is Yurt, the Silent Chief from Demon Souls. Now, if you want a concrete reason why people say these kinds of games just straight up hate the player, this dude is it. A common thing you do in Demon Souls is find NPCs out in the levels when out doing those, and then they start appearing in the hub area called the Nexus. It's usually in your best interest to rescue everyone you find, because they do important stuff like teach you spells and various miracles that can't be obtained any other way. So when you find this dude trapped in the cage in the Tower of Latria, your first instinct is to rescue him. But Demon's Souls is a cruel game, and that is the last thing you want to do. At first, he seems normal enough, but if you manage to kill a boss while he's at the Nexus, then you actually find two bodies on the ground. Now, they're not any of the NPCs, they're just random corpses, so nothing seriously bad has happened. Not yet, at least. If you keep on trucking and don't bother to ask about these mysterious corpses, you are going to be in trouble, because after this, he starts killing people. He'll pretty much kill everyone who isn't the blacksmith and the basic store guy, it seriously sucks, and if you're not talking to anyone, you might not even realize why any of it's happening. But if you do talk to Yurt after finding the corpses, then he suddenly gets a lot more sinister, saying stuff like how he can go on with his work, and that life is hardly as precious as one might think, making it kind of obvious what's going on. The only way to stop this dude from killing the helpful NPCs in the Nexus is to simply kill him first, or just leave him locked up in Latria. That's the only choices you have. Demon's Souls is a game that expects you to pay close attention to what's going on, because it can and will permanently ruin your game if you don't. And number eight is Metro 2033, where skipping dialogue can get you the bad ending. Now, we've mentioned before how Metro games have a moral point system where you're secretly graded in the background of each of the games, depending on how quote unquote good you are. And depending on how many points you have, you'll either get a good or a bad ending. But that's pretty straightforward and not exactly how it works, at least in every single Metro game. In Exodus, the newest entry, that is very much the case. Pretty much every moral point you get comes from doing something nice or sparing people or something. But in the first Metro game, 2033, it's a little more mysterious. Basically, instead of earning points for being moral, you earn points for just doing stuff. It's more about knowing how Metro works and coming to understand the place better. So if you want the best ending in 2033, you have to listen to a lot of optional dialogue. Seriously, most of the moral points in this game come from either talking to people in optional conversations or listening to NPC dialogue, and, and that's seriously about it. There's genuinely not a lot more to it than that, and it's just kind of funny to me, the only way to get the good ending in the game is by listening to people, not skipping their dialogue. 
And number seven is Mass Effect 2's warnings. You gotta, you gotta listen to the warnings. This is one where you'd have to ignore a lot of warning signs to make the wrong choice, but if you're going all in on your Renegade playthrough and just skipping the parts where people talk, it's possible. One of the more infamous evil things you can do in Mass Effect 2 is side with Morinth. See, as part of Samara's loyalty mission, she wants you to help down her evil daughter named Morinth, who's basically a space serial killer Black Widow. Anyone she sleeps with, she kills. And it's not like just a thing she does, it's a genetic thing that gives her that power. It's all explained to you in dialogue, but if you skip it, it's possible to not even know that stuff. You can probably see where this is going now, right? During the mission, you side with Morinth and kill Samara, and one replaces the other on your team. Afterwards, you can take the romance option with her, and surprise, surprise, it's an instant game over. Siding with her in the first place is kind of dumb. Morinth is basically just pure evil, but hey, if you want those renegade points, why not? Choosing to sleep with her, though, is so dumb that only people who basically want to see what happens would ever pick it, or if you skipped all that dialogue. It's literally just instant death, and there's no reason to do it otherwise. And number six is the Sand People encampment from Knights of the Old Republic. Another very dialogue-heavy, Bioware game, Knights of the Old Republic can hit you with a lot of exposition, and most of it isn't strictly necessary, except for when you go to talk to the Sand People on Tatooine. These guys really love their rules, and if you do anything that gets on their nerves, they'll turn on you, like in an instant. Before going there, you get this long explanation of all the stuff you're not supposed to do, like don't take anything, don't question their traditions, don't insult them, and basically anything. Anyway, basically, it's super easy to make these guys mad. If you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing at any moment, they will attack you. So yeah, if you skip the explanations, you're going to be reloading saves a lot in this place because all of them are looking for an excuse to blast a hole in your head. I don't even remember if it's possible to continue if they get mad at you. Like, it probably is, but having to take on this entire encampment at once, it's not fun. And number five is Final Fantasy IV's Lodestone Cavern, a place nobody really ever looks forward to while playing this game. The Dark Elf's Cave, it just sucks to get through. It's got this really obnoxious gimmick. You can't use any metallic equipment here because it's in a magnetic field, so you're forced to basically gimp your party to get through this place and take on the boss, the Dark Elf. Uh, but to make things even more annoying, there's actually two things you have to do to prepare here. So there's actually two different pieces of dialogue that if you miss them, them, the place is basically a nightmare to finish. Of course, the first one is the pop-up telling you your metal weapons are useless here. Like, you'll just wander around baffled as to why you suddenly can't do anything in battle. The other thing, though, only happens when you get all the way to the boss. See, if you miss this bit of dialogue bad at the castle with Edward, you're screwed and there's no way to win against this boss. Seriously, miss talking to Edward in Tororia and the boss, the boss is unwinnable. So even if you didn't skip the stuff about metal equipment, you can still get stuck. Most people probably are going to hit this wall by accident too. But I'm sure there's some people out there who intentionally avoided talking to Edward because seriously, nobody wants to talk to Edward. He's the spoony bard. He, the guy just sucks. And number four is La Mulania 2, The Cursed Tablet. Unlike many of the previous dialogues, which are easy to miss, you've really got to be trying hard to skip this one. The La Mulania games are filled with like these baffling puzzles that even the most careful reader will struggle with. But this little feature is about as blatant as it gets. Like early in the game, seriously, it's one of the first things you can find. There's a tablet that says, you're forbidden from laying eyes on this tablet again. Those who do not heed this warning will suffer pain of death. Pretty dramatic, right? But this thing is not messing around. If you look at it again, it activates hard mode, which makes an already incredibly difficult game even more ridiculously challenging. And also it never says you're in hard mode now. It just suddenly makes it so that you take more damage and the enemies get more aggressive and there's no way to reverse it. So if you keep playing for a while and hit a brick wall of difficulty, your only option is to restart the game. It's a weird one because the game warns you about this stuff like a lot without straight up saying what's happening. So the people who are most likely to get blindsided by this are people who are either new to the game so they don't expect it to have a big screw you right at the start or people who skipped the dialogue box the first time and wanted to read the tablet again this one instance we're just skipping all the text like don't bother reading the tablet at all is probably better like the game only makes slightly less sense than normal if you do 
And number three is Belch's Factory from Earthbound, a pretty easygoing RPG. Set in the fictional country of Eagle Land, the game is basically a JRPG, but set in a cartoon version of the United States, or at least a big chunk of it. They don't throw that many puzzles at you, and when they do, it's all pretty easy. But if you want to get into Belch's Factory, then you're really going to have to pay attention to the dialogue, because if you want to progress in the game, you have to get inside this dungeon. Hell, just finding the entrance is actually not very obvious. It's hidden behind a waterfall, but when when you try to get inside, the guard asks for a password. You don't actually get any options to pick either, so a lot of people get here and just get totally lost. There is one NPC that can give you the answer though, but good luck understanding them. You find them in Saturn Valley, a place filled with these weird looking dudes who call themselves Mr. Saturn, and they have a bizarre text font that makes everything you say somewhat challenging to read. So if you go to this place just rush through, it's possible to miss out on what you're supposed to get in order to get into Belch's factory which is just that you stand under the waterfall for three straight minutes. There's pretty much no way to find that out on their own. Three minutes doesn't sound like long, but when you stand somewhere in a video game for three minutes, it really feels like a friggin' eternity. And yes, these days, these kinds of things are easy to look up online, but if you're trying to play the game legit, this one sequence can be incredibly frustrating if you miss that one little bit of dialogue. And number two, Fallout New Vegas is dead money. The first DLC add on Fallout New Vegas doesn't screw around. You're hunted by unkillable holograms, many of the areas are filled with noxious gas, and most of your equipment has to be scavenged on site. It's just all around really hard, and even if you manage to make it to your goal, the Sierra Madre Vault, there's a final screw you in there for the unattentive player. See, you get multiple warnings throughout the adventure not to read the notes on the terminal in the vault, and they are not kidding. If you do you read it, the vault automatically locks and traps you inside and it's permanent. Like, it even gives you a game over when you starve to death, there's literally no way to escape if you open this terminal. And while there are multiple warnings for this final trap, it is very possible to miss them. There are a lot of terminals, notes, and dialogues in New Vegas, and there's a lot in Dead Money as well, but with all the added danger in Dead Money, I could definitely see how people might skip through sections that they thought they've already seen, or even just skipping computer entries that don't look particularly particularly essential. Dying alone in a gold vault is a pretty undignified way to go out too, so all the dialogues warning you about the terminal probably weren't the best to skip. And finally at number one, Deus Ex Human Revolution's malfunctioning biochip. Even though Deus Ex is an FPS, it's also partially an RPG, which means that there's a lot of talking and reading ahead of you, but if you just want to get to the shooty parts without bothering with the reading bits, you can potentially fall for a really obvious trap. At a certain point in the game, your vision starts getting screwed up, and your main guy, Adam Jensen, will sometimes stumble or wince in pain. You're instructed to go to a limb clinic to replace a biochip, and if you haven't really been paying much attention to the story, you might think that's what you're supposed to do. All the news organizations are saying the old biochips have a glitch that need to be replaced, and the game doesn't explicitly tell you anywhere at all not to do it. So a lot of players probably went in and got their chip replaced without thinking. In the world of Deus Ex, though, nothing is as it seems, and yeah, the biochip replacements are a trap. Later in the game, they turn off your augmentations while fighting a boss, making the whole encounter way more annoying to deal with. The funny thing about it is that if you play the original Deus Ex or did a lot of reading in the game, you would know that there is no way these chip replacements were on the up and up. But if you didn't talk to the right people or read the correct notes, it's entirely possible to have no idea it's an issue. It's not like a totally game-breaking thing or anything. You can choose either option and ultimately you can come out on top. But it's just kind of funny how if you're paying attention, replacing the biochip is the most obvious bad choice you can possibly make. But if you're new to the series and haven't done a lot of digging, you might think it's perfectly fine. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is a course of subscriptions so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks